Hello everyone and welcome back and welcome to a new architecture pattern which is event driven architecture pattern. So this is one of the architecture pattern which is most commonly used and most popular. Okay. So we'll try to understand it more in depth. Okay. With event driven architecture first we will try to understand what is event and what is event driven architecture actually means. Okay. So what is event and first of all how microservices talks to each other what is the importance of event in the microservice world event is nothing but some kind of you can say a message which is being sent from one microservice to another microservice which can expect you to do some action or just receive that message and do the asynchronous, asynchronous processing okay like there are two microservices. One microservice is generating some action and based on that, that microservice want to send an email. So it want to talk to an email service. Okay. So what first microservice can say is I am creating an event or send email and that event is not synchronous. That event is asynchronous event and that asynchronous event will be forwarded to the second microservice. Second microservice will receive that message and will do the appropriate action based on what event contains. Okay. So if we talk about the terms, what is event? Event is nothing but something happened, right? A state or application state has changed. User attribute, user database, user table, user email has been changed. And if user email has been changed, we need to raise an event. So what is the event? Notify user somebody credited some amount in your bank what they do they are raising an event and sending you the notification so whenever the state of application is getting changed we are raising an event okay so event terminology should be clear now it is just a uh, notifying the system about the change of the state right so if the another microservice is not aware about the change which is happening we are just sending an event and notifying okay the state of the system has changed from X and Y do this or perform this particular action and that communication is happening through the events. Okay. There can be a different type of communication happens between different microservices like what all we use to communicate to allow a communication between microservices. If you talk about two independent services, they can talk to each other with the RPC calls. In advanced world you can call it as a grpc by google or you can send an event from one microservice to another microservice asynchronous way or you can just make a rest call from one microservice to another you already have the address of another microservice make a rest api call where you can hit get put post delete all these uh, http verbs are available to update delete get the resource right like user resource Right, so you can make a HTTP call, get put, post, delete, patch on that particular resource on another microservice from the from a first microservice. Or you can raise an event. If you are using the event-driven message, message-driven architecture, then you your first microservice will raise an event and it will send this asynchronous event to the second microservice. Okay, so these are various type of communication can happen between different microservices. So event driven architecture is an architecture style characterized by the existence of number of relatively independent actor who can communicate through different events. I mean, this is just a theoretical definition. It is nothing but, okay, we will be just raising an event from one microservice to another microservice asynchronously and that microservice will be dealing with it. Okay. So event driven, why I'm not calling it is a synchronous communication because event driven architecture is adding the loose coupling between the services where one service is not aware about what is happening in another service. If I talk about the simple example, this is one service which is raising event. Okay. And these events are being pushed to SPSQ, Kafka, RabbitMQ, any asynchronous queue system. Okay. Then there will be a particular set of consumers which will consume the message coming from the SQS or some kind of a queuing system. It can be RabbitMQ, uh, IBM MQs, Kafka or anything, right? 
but we created an event and we send it to SQS. We are not aware about which particular service is going to consume this. So we are trying to achieve a loose coupling between different microservices through the event driven architecture. And it is purely asynchronous because event created, event sent, we get acknowledgement of okay, event sent successfully. Now when this event is getting processed based on the availability of consumers, what is the sequence of the event in which particular fashion that event has been executed for that you have to use some certain set of constraint on these queues like FIFO queues and all these different patterns okay so what is event driven architecture and what all different uh, primitives so there are different kind of events we will be handling with like events command and queries how to microservices can talk like I can request you some data I can command you for doing some action so when I'm saying when I'm when we are using command pattern or command that means I am expecting some action from you when I'm saying query okay just give me this data so all these are actually event driven primitives events commands and queries what are these we will talk about them event notification event carried state transfer every event when the, the, these are getting executed they actually carry the state transfer state X will transition to the state Y okay all interactions taking place in distributed system distributed system means systems are independent loosely coupled over the network can be categorized into three different primitives events command and queries if you understand this event command and queries you will be able to understand CQRS and event sourcing patterns okay what is event whenever a system perform an action the message containing that observation of fact that is called an event you received an email okay you received an event you sent an email it means you raised an event Okay, what you have done is you performed some action and that information that 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 information is contained inside message that is called as an event. Okay, command whenever a message carries an expectation of changing the internal state of the system that is called command. There is some expectation involved whenever we are raising an event. Okay, not it's a simple message right. Now we are talking in terms of message. Message can be an event, can be a command, can be a query. Whenever a system is required to retrieve its internal state and present it, query means I'm querying you this data. I'm querying you this particular state, give me. So this will become a query. So this message will be known as a query. Okay, command when, I, when I'm expecting you to change the user state from state X to state Y, that will become command. Okay, so basic terminologies are clear for event driven now we are talking about how these notifications happens we are raising the event then there should be always be a one producer one consumer right one service will be raising the event sending that message to the event store to some particular queue system so this is like asynchronous one way communication is happening you are sending and this is receiving because like Consider a real world example, mail notification service. You have created one microservice which is sending email and another microservice is doing some random task and sending email, sending uh, notification, right? Send raising an event. So that raising event will be one way from that microservice to an event notification microservice, right? And you may be using, because we are calling this asynchronous because these two microservices are not talking to each other. They are con considered as a producer consumer services so we will be just sending this event to the event store and consumer will consume that event and will send the message okay event with state transfer you will be raising some event which will carry a particular state change in the in the store right so like query request here this is your application here you have a local uh, application state what you are doing is you are making an action okay and this action is getting updating this action indirectly updating this user state in the database right so once that is done an uh, event will be emitted and event will be consumed by the local store local store will be updated and it will notify the user about this particular change so there will be some particular event which will which will carry the state transfer in the system okay just a basic example like how this producer consumer works is here your event data 
it can be your front end application can be a microservice which is raising event on front end you are clicking on to one button doing a validation doing verification then it is raising event and here is your publisher maybe another microservice which is taking care of publishing these events which can be query command right it is publishing these events to the event store okay and there will be a subscriber who will be subscribing this event data store to receive what event we have received that will happen asynchronously so there is a publisher and there is a subscriber to this event data store now you can consider that this is a node.js microservice this is your sqs this is can be your rabbitmq you pushed one event and there is a another node.js microservice listening to this rabbitmq to receive the event which has been which has been delivered to this sqs or rabbitmq then you will just talk to the relevant service to update the system state okay so what are the pros and cons of uh, event driven architecture the only thing which i see is what if there are multiple events are coming and what you want is all those events should execute in a particular sequence so your final state of the system should be consistent okay you triggered three different events okay read data update data set one update data set two or five read final data if this sequence get distorted then you will have a different system state and in final query where you are requesting the current system state you will get the wrong information okay the resilient is different difficult to implement a combination of loosely coupled services event driven architecture applying this loose coupling between all services which are associated with this event store data consistency and coherence across services can pose a challenge uh, forcing developers to consider eventual consistency problems such as timeless and collision like we have to take care of uh, the sequence of execution of events which are coming and getting processed okay because sometimes what happens the sequence of the event matters and if there is a, any conflict okay particular event is not expected to execute first then we will not be able to get the consistent data or consistent state okay in that case there are always a pros and cons and there are always a way to fix it so we'll talk about that in the next video